Hi, everyone. Uh, bon après-midi, tout le monde. I've got a lot to cover today, so I'm going to get going. I'm just going to give a brief overview of uh, what's going on uh, in Canada. <clears throat> Worldwide, we know we're 40 million. Uh, we're 198,000, approaching 200,000 increases across the multiple provinces. In Ontario, we're at uh, 65,000, uh, 75 cases, 704 increase from yesterday. It's kind of teetering there. Ottawa Public Health is 51, Toronto is 244, Peel uh, 168, New York 103, and Halton. Uh, 20, uh, 23. Donc, euh, au mondial, on est rendu à 40 millions. Au Canada, on est presque à 200 000 cas. Euh, on voit des euh, augmentations des cas à travers du Canada. Donc, en Ontario, on est rendu à 65 075 cas, euh, qui représente une augmentation de 704. On est stable entre 685 700 cas depuis à peu près une semaine. Euh, donc, euh, au niveau... Euh, uh, des, des notes de situation que laquelle je voudrais parler. Uh, je vais vous partager. I'm going to share my screen right now because I want to go over our local situation uh, first, which I actually uh, need to add here. I forgot to put it up. So uh, locally, as you know, our, our numbers have increased uh, significantly um, over the last month or so, and I'm just going to uh, go over it with you. Right now, we're at 159 cases. As a matter of fact, uh, the active cases. And, and over the weekend, uh, um, from Friday, we added 26 more cases to, to a total of 435. Um, uh, and uh, uh, from the 26, 17 are in Prescott Russell, uh, 7 are in SDNG, and 2 are in Cornwall. Uh, donc, uh, on, a, on est actuellement à 159 cas actifs dans notre région, avec 400-300 cas en total. On a, on a ajouté 26 cas uh, depuis vendredi passé. On est rendu à 17 cas, uh, donc des, uh, parmi les 26, on est rendu à 17 de Prescott Russell, 7 de SDNG et 2 de Cornwall. Uh, we currently have four hospitalized and one in the ICU. I must say that the ICU admission is not related to COVID. Um, unfortunately and, and tragically, we had one death. We've had a death at uh, Manoir Prescott Russell, where we currently have an outbreak, and I will talk about that. Donc, au niveau des décès, on a ajouté un, malheureusement, tragiquement, un décès au uh, résidence de Prescott Russell. Our, our uh, condolences go out to the family um, of this individual. Uh, it's just uh, this is the, this is what toll that this uh, virus takes. Um, uh, in terms of um, just going to look at some of the numbers and I'll go back to the outbreaks because I want to talk a bit about, about them. Um, so essentially in terms of our confirmed cases, uh, we're really up. You can see that we've added 125, we're at 435 here um, uh, total. And you can see that uh, we haven't, we're not even halfway through October and we've got more than we had in September. Uh, donc vous pouvez voir ici qu'on est, on est presque pas au demi-octobre, on a pas fait, on a mis octobre à ce moment-là, on a plus de cas déjà que on a en septembre, donc on voit la croissance importante de de nos cas. Et puis au niveau des cartes, on, on voit encore qu'on a des presque partout, on a des cas actifs. And you can see we have total active cases. Uh, just as a sideline, we are actually going to be doing some more tweaking of this. We're going to be adding some more numbers here just to compare with previous days, just to make it easier for everybody. Donc on va ajouter d'autres chiffres bientôt uh, avec uh, les chiffres de jours précédents pour juste pour de, de montrer la, la, la différence en jour par jour. Uh, parce que comme ça, c'est un peu plus difficile à ajouter. Uh, so that, that's where we are uh, with those. I'm, I'm just going to talk a bit about our, our long-term care uh, facilities. Um, uh, and um, re residents, uh, Prescott Russell, uh, we have uh, 31 residents uh, who are positive, um, 15 active cases, 15 resolved, and unfortunately one death. Donc au niveau de résidence Prescott Russell, on a 31 résidents qui sont positifs, euh, donc 15 sont actifs, euh, 15 sont résolus et malheureusement une, une mortalité. On a 17 euh, euh, personnels euh, là-bas qui étaient positifs. Euh, on, on rentre de, demain pour retester tout le monde. We're going in tomorrow to retest everybody. Uh, I was on the phone all weekend trying to get help um, to, for support. 
uh, EMS uh, has, uh, Prescott Russell has gone in, uh, went in on Saturday and over the weekend to provide support. La fin de semaine, on a on a demandé à, euh, aux paramédics de Prescott Russell d'aller euh, donner un coup de main euh, pour supporter, euh, parce que déjà, ils ont, 17, euh, 17 personnels sont malades, ne peuvent pas travailler, donc c'est une pénurie de, trava de travailleurs. So there's been a um, HR shortage there. This afternoon, the Canadian Red Cross is there. Uh, we, I formally requested over the weekend, speaking to Toronto. And uh, they're there doing an evaluation to be able to um, give a more longer term support to the home. Uh, La Croix Rouge est là cet après-midi pour faire une évaluation uh, afin de donner l'aide uh, et le support uh, de plus, plus, long, plus prolongé. Uh, at the palace, we've had uh, nine, uh, nine residents and two staff. Uh, and uh, we have repeated the testing over the weekend and we had done a site visit uh, on Friday uh, looking at the infection control to see if there's anything we need to do. Things seem to be fine. Uh, we did the same thing with Prescott Russell. Uh, uh, we uh, visited, we had an on-site IPAC visit um, with, our, with our staff there uh, just to look at that on Friday. Donc, uh, au Palace, uh, uh, Alexandria, on a neuf résidents qui sont positifs. Uh, avec uh, deux uh, employés. Nous avons répété les tests uh, pendant ce fin de semaine et um, uh, on a fait une visite uh, uh, d'inspection pour uh, l'infection, contrôle, etc. Uh, vendredi passé. Uh, St. Joseph Villa, the one resident is hospitalized um, and repeat testing was done on everybody. Again, this is a, I explained, this is, this is an individual that um, was transported to the hospital for another reason and, and tested positive. Uh, the same thing for a Sandfield Place retirement home. Um, we we have uh, one one resident um, who uh, uh, again was hospitalized and was positive at the hospitalization for other reasons. And so that, but however, we've got, done testing there as well. At Saint Jacques Nursing Home continues to be in an outbreak uh, because we had a uh, we had another staff that was positive as well. Donc, uh, au niveau de la Villa Saint-Joseph et uh, uh, place de retraite, uh, maison de retraite Saint-Field, uh, les deux sont en Cornwall. Uh, nous avons visité les deux places uh, vendredi passé uh, pour faire une inspection de contrôle d'infection, etc. Uh, et uh, nous avons, uh, uh, en effet, les, on a répété les tests pendant la fin de semaine uh, aux deux. Uh, et uh, ce sont les deux cas les deux situations qu'on a eues, les deux résidents étaient hospitalisés pour d'autres raisons et ils étaient positifs du dépistage de routine à l'entrée de l'hôpital. Donc, c'est pour ça qu'on a déclaré un flambé. La même chose pour, pour Sainfield. Euh, on a toujours une flambée euh, euh, Maison Saint-Jacques euh, avec un autre cas qui était positif. Uh, donc, uh, so that's where we are with, with those. In terms of our, our schools, Uh, we are, haven't changed much. We still have uh, 12, uh, 12 schools with cases with a total of um, uh, 17 total with 15 active ones with just still um, one outbreak. And nothing has changed since the last week. On niveau de nos écoles, on a 12 écoles avec 15 cas actifs, 17 en total, deux sont résolus avec une uh, école en flambé, uh, rien qui a changé, aucune école fermée. So that's where we are with that. Um, I, uh, in terms of the testing, uh, we have, I just want to give you the, the, the numbers for the testing before I talk about uh, some other issues uh, related to our numbers. Je vais vous donner les chiffres au niveau des tests. Um, on est rendu à 64 926 tests de fait dans nos centres de dépistage avec uh, 10 000 Uh, 10, uh, 10 010 à Oxbury, Cornwall 14 946, Winchester 10 840, Castleman 21 450, uh, Castleman Limoges maintenant, uh, Rockland 6 271, Alexandria 1409, uh, et paramédic de, IMA, de uh, Prescott Russell 190 et le paramédic de SDNG 338. So in terms of our testing, on, uh, to, to date, we've done 64,926 tests. Uh, Hawkesbury has 10,010 uh, uh, tests done to date. Cornwall is 14,946. Winchester is 10,840. Castleman is 21,450. Now it's switched over to Limoges. That includes the latest numbers from Limoges as well. 
Rockland is 6,271. Alexandria is 1,409. Uh, EMS uh, and Prescott Russell 190, and EMS SDNG at 338. I want to talk a bit about um, uh, what I talked about on the weekend, and I've done multiple media calls today uh, about potentially uh, going into a modified stage two. And I want to explain some of the numbers and thinking behind that. Donc, j'aimerais en discuter un peu maintenant euh, euh, la possibilité que, à cause de nos chiffres qui augmentent de façon importante dans notre région, euh, que euh, euh, qu quels sont les facteurs qu'on va envisager. Pour le moment, il n'y a aucune décision de prise. For now, there's no decision has been made, but the ministry is looking at our numbers. We're looking at our numbers. So I just want to give you a bit of an overview of um, how we look at things and, and, and how the, uh, the, some of the decisions will be made. I want to bring your attention to this, uh, this paper here that was um, uh, published last week, actually, on October 15th by the Science Table, which is, uh, uh, is experts uh, from across Ontario um, on uh, basically uh, uh, scientific issues uh, that, uh, that uh, inform our decisions and so on. So this is the uh, evidence that this is the, the table that was released last week. And this is sort of evidence to support us. Like what can we use to support changes and closures? Donc, c'est um, le table de science de, de COVID d'Ontario. Uh, c'est un table des experts à travers dans, dans, de, de, de microbiologistes, epidemiologistes, etc., uh, cliniciens qui sont dévoués à la science de, et qui nous informons de façon scientifique uh, pour qu'on puisse aider nos décisions. Uh, donc, uh, uh, so, uh, leur interprétation, c'est que uh, ils ont divisé ça comme uh, des, uh, des périodes de transmission. Donc, on peut être dans une période de transmission qui est bas, on peut être dans une période qu'on uh, qu a une condition modérée, et on peut être dans une condition avec uh, transmission qui est hausse. Donc, um, so basically, they've kind of broken it down into kind of three categories, where you have low level and based on numbers, and I'll explain that a bit later, based on numbers, you have low levels of transmission, um, and, and then you have um, moderate levels of transmission, and then you have high levels of transmission. So in high levels of transmission, the recommendation is restricting indoor activities uh, where it's difficult to wear masks and physical distance, for example, indoor dining, banquet halls, gyms, bars, clubs, and casinos. And this was done uh, to stage three for Ottawa, Toronto, Peel, and now York. Donc, euh, euh, au niveau des, euh, des recommandations, si on est dans une présence d'une hausse transmission, je vais vous donner les chiffres tantôt, euh, euh, c'est là qu'on recommande, on voit euh, l'efficacité de plus, plus de restrictions, euh, par exemple, de, de fermer, d'interdire de, euh, les, les restaurants de, de manger dans l'intérieur, les halles de banquet. Uh, gymnases, bars, etc., les clubs, casinos, et ceci qui a été fait à cause qu'on avait un taux de, de transmission qui était haut. Uh, donc, uh, uh, quand, par contre, quand c'est modéré, uh, il n'y a pas beaucoup, uh, on, on, il n'y a pas beaucoup de, il n'y a pas beaucoup de, de bienfaits ou uh, uh, avantages de changer. Donc, uh, the important thing is that when you're moderate transmission, uh, the, uh, uh, the restrictions have to be weighed against potential harm to the economy. And that's what I've been doing because we've been, up until recently, we've been in the moder moderate kind of area, as I'll show you, um, uh, going there. And then we're kind of teetering up to the high area as well. So I just wanted to give you sort of a bit of an update here as where we are. So this is, again, what they're recommending. So what they're saying here is if you have low transmission, the low transmission means uh, less than five um, uh, per hundred thousand uh, per week growth cases. So we measure the we measure the weekly growth of, of the cases over a seven day period. So um, uh, low low there's really not, no difference in adding restrictions. Moderate means you're between five and twenty five cases per hundred thousand growth per week. And and again there's really not much of a advantage of closing things down in terms of uh, benefit of, uh, of, uh, of the risk of the population. But then as you get into regions with higher transmission, you could see there's a bigger difference in, in the restrictions and being able to decrease the risk and spread uh, in the community. Donc, quand on est dans, a, dans une zone, une, une région avec uh, transmission qui sont bas, 
Euh, on, il n'y a pas de différence si on ferme d'autres, donc on ne ferme pas. Quand on est modéré, euh, il y a peu de différence. Donc, c'est pour ça, nous, on, est, on était là jusqu'à jusqu quelques jours. Euh, et euh, quand on a dans une hausse période, oui, il y a, il y a une différence au niveau euh, du risque, des risques importants où on, euh, dans laquelle on devrait fermer. Et ceci était fait, comme je dis tantôt, à Ottawa, Peel, Toronto et York. So this was, the, this was done in the regions that were high transmission, um, which were Peel, Toronto, York added, and, and Ottawa, as you know. So what is the situation in our area now? And this is, um, and this is not up to date, and I'll give you some up to date numbers, but we're, which we'll be getting. Um, you can see that uh, th this is the, the orange line here, it is the confirmed case rate per week on a weekly basis per seven days. And you could see that, you know, up until kind of here, this is the low level below five, we were there uh, pretty much uh, the beginning of August, and then we kind of crept up a bit. And, and this is the moderate zone here. This is between five and 25. And again, it's the number of cases per week, increased number of new cases per week, uh, per 100,000 population. Okay, that's what it, what it is. And the cutoff rate, as we saw, is, is, tw is over 25 during the high range. So if you look at what we, where we were, so this is, this is where we were here. We're kind of still under the line. These are the actual number of cases here, but the orange line here is where we are. So here, here we're around 20, 22. And this is around the time where stage two was brought in for the other ones. Donc, pendant le temps que uh, stade 2 était uh, mis uh, sur place pour uh, Ottawa, Toronto et Peel, nous, on était comme ici. On était vraiment encore dans le modéré, mais approchait uh, la haute. Donc, c'est pour ça que nous n'avons pas été mis uh, dans le stade 2 à ce moment-là. So, that's one of the reasons we weren't put at that point in time, because it was about a week or so ago, a week and a half, two weeks ago that it was. So, this is where we are now. If you look at what happened in the week of October 4th, uh, you know, uh, the full week there, uh, it went up to 37. And uh, this has not finished yet, because it starts the 11th going all the way. Um, and I did the today's number, which I did myself, um, shows us that uh, between August 12th and, and, and 18th uh, of 2020, our case rate was 48, uh, uh, 48, which is uh, really, which puts us in the high level zone here. And, um, and so, um, uh, donc, nous, on est, on actuellement, uh, comme vous voyez ici, on a commencé ici dans les zones modérées, Et là, on a augmenté, euh, on était presque à 38 la semaine passée. Là, aujourd'hui, parce que ça, c'est pas tout à fait avec les, tous les détails. Donc, avec les derniers détails que nous avons, euh, j'ai calculé euh, juste vite comme ça euh, que nos, euh, nos, euh, les cas par, euh, par 100 000, étaient, euh, par 7 jours de fil, étaient 48. Uh, a, uh, I did this twice. I did it 48 because I counted all long-term care facilities. Um, uh, residents and staff, uh, and then I removed them, and by removing them, it, it brought it down to 25, which is still at the at the higher level now. So we're we're kind of uh, right at the, at the at the edge right now, and you can see. So week by week, um, my, my staff have done this, and it, we haven't completed this week yet, uh, but you could see that uh, our rates progressively were up. So we were kind of in the moderate zone. The white here means we were in the lower zone. And then all of a sudden we went up to the moderate zone yellow here, um, and then uh, we went to the uh, this pink zone, which is the high zone, and that's where we are again today, um, based on based on our total numbers. Donc, uh, si vous voyez la, la progression, on, on voit que uh, début début au mois d'août uh, jusqu'à fin d'août, on était comme dans la région blanche ici, qui était vraiment low, uh, qui va en bas. Uh, transmission de bas, et uh, on voit ici, c'était jaune, uh, qu'on commence uh, à rentrer dans le modéré, uh, c'était au début de septembre, et vous voyez, semaine par semaine par semaine, une augmentation, on était à 20 uh, le fin septembre, et vous voyez, uh, début, début octobre, on a rendu à 37, et ceci, uh, et actuellement, on est rendu à 48, à peu près, pour si on calcule les dernières uh, 7 jours. Um, so, 
I'll, all this to say that I've got a lot of questions about are we going going to go into stage two, uh, into stage two? Uh, do we have the criteria to do that? Well, if you look at the numbers, we're, we're there. Um, do, do, who's going to make that decision? It's going to be a joint decision between uh, us um, and um, the, uh, the government. Uh, these numbers, the numbers are going to be finalized and uh, done on a provincial scale, and they'll be reviewed tomorrow. So we'll have some idea about it tomorrow. The um, the other the other thing is that um, uh, we we uh, we have again the, these uh, we have a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of pros and cons to that, and it's not only the numbers as well. Okay, uh, right now, as you saw, we we have five outbreaks. Uh, we have uh, hospitalized individuals. Our positivity rate is higher than it was about a month ago in terms of testing. Um, uh, our, our rate of spread is higher. Our, so there's a multiple things that are going on. So it's not just one, but it kind of tells us that. Plus the fact that we're really surrounded by hot zones, you know, on, uh, on one side in Quebec and the other side in Ottawa. So those are factors that are gonna come into play to making a decision of whether or not we need to go in, into uh, stage two. So au niveau de la décision qui va être prise, uh, Ça va être pris euh, probablement pas avant demain. Ça va être en consultation avec nous, euh, avec le ministère et le médecin euh, hygiéniste chef d'Ontario pour, euh, pour voir euh, si on devrait être rentré au stade 2 euh, pour euh, une période de, de, de 28 jours. En effet, on est, on, on, c'est, c'est clair avec les chiffres qu'on est là. Euh, et, mais ce n'est pas juste les chiffres qui comptent, c'est d'autres choses qu'on doit prendre en note. Uh, une, c'est le fait que le taux de positivité uh, des tests était rendu à uh, 1.45, 1.5 à peu près, qui est beaucoup, uh, qui est plus élevé que c'était uh, il y a à peu près un mois. On a cinq flambées dans nos uh, maisons de retraite et longue durée. Uh, nous avons uh, les patients hospitalisés, etc. Donc, ça, c'est un tableau complet qu'on devrait voir. C'est pas juste avec un chef qu'on va faire la décision. Uh, d'autres choses, d'autres facteurs qui est pas une qui est un indicateur, mais plutôt exclusif pour nous. Euh, on a Québec à un côté, et puis on a, on a Ottawa, des deux zones rouges dans, euh, autour de nous. Donc, euh, il y a d'autres facteurs. Donc, la décision, va, la décision n'est, pas, n'est pas facile, euh, euh, parce qu'il euh, faut, faut vraiment faire un balance entre les deux. Par contre, si on continue avec les chiffres qui augmentent comme ça, on, nos, on, va, on va voir euh, des hôpitaux débordés, etc. Donc, entre-temps, on demande les gens de rester chez eux, de ne pas voyager pour des, des, des raisons exceptionnellement, pour des régions, pour, sauf pour des choses essentielles, euh, de ne pas euh, visiter les autres personnes euh, pour qu'on puisse diminuer la courbe. So, I, I, we're going to have a decision over the next day or two. Um, in the interim, we're asking everybody, again, stay home, um, don't go out unnecessarily. Uh, only mix with your own uh, with your own social circle, um, and that to me is is a very important factor moving forward. Um, we've also, as you know, released uh, um, on Friday uh, Halloween guidance, which we strongly re- recommend not to have trick or treat um, and not to have any parties. Obviously, uh, we're right as you can you can understand now when you see the numbers why I, I issued that. Uh, vous voir, uh, uh, vendredi, nous avons uh, annoncer nos recommandations pour Halloween. En, en, c'est sûr que euh, le collecte de bonbons, on ne fait pas cette année. Euh, on, on, on recommande de choisir des, des alternatives virtuelles, pas avoir des parties, et des rassemblements, etc. Euh, et vous pouvez, voir, vous pouvez comprendre pourquoi nous avons, euh, nous avons donné cette recommandation vendredi en voyant les chiffres dans notre région qui sont en augmentant. So I uh, I have a I don't have that many questions here. I have I just have one media outlet that asked me some questions. Uh, where are the hospitalized patients treated? Um, Cornwall. They're both in Cornwall. Uh, you mentioned earlier this month that you would not seek to revert to area stage two, saying that at the time local case was not connected to hotspots such as Ottawa. Appeal. Has there been any changes as a new case is stemming from? We are seeing cases locally. We're seeing cases um, uh, with contacts. We're seeing cases all, all over, uh, all over. And so um, I think that now is the time to to really reevaluate whether we go to stage two. And the question is, do you believe the area will return to stage two before the end of the month? Um, we're going to be making a decision, uh, you know, over the next couple of days. We're going to be looking at the numbers again. Uh, but you could see that the numbers, unless we start seeing sort of a downshift over the weekend, we had those 
um, 26 cases. And I must say that out of the 16 cases, um, 16 were not uh, uh, part of the outbreak. So that's important for us to, to look at. So at this point, um, again, uh, we were keeping a close eye on it and I'm not ruling it out. Um, but again, uh, we're, we'll have more uh, of an indication tomorrow. I'll be meeting the ministry tomorrow. And just on a final note, I just wanted to remind everybody that because we're getting increased cases, we're going to be, and you I'm sure you've received the invitation. Uh, we've now going to be doing these media briefings three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time. Just pour, uh, just pour uh, souligner que je pense que vous avez reçu une invitation, mais à cause euh, des différents des, des flambées qu'on a et les, les chiffres qu'on voit augmentant, nous allons avoir euh, euh, ces conférences de presse trois fois par semaine, soit lundi, mercredi et vendredi, euh, le même heure. I'll open it up to, uh, so I'm done now, and I'll open up to some questions, Jenna. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Our first question comes from Philippe Blanchet, the leader. Please go ahead. Hi, Dr. Paul. Um, I've, got, I've got two questions here. You're saying, you're saying that um, you're looking at the next couple of days of whether or not we're going to go into a modified stage two or not. Um, that would be for the entire Eastern Ontario Health Unit region? Yes, it would. Because Prescott Russell has four times the current COVID-19 infections from Cornwall and SDNG, yep. and they've had two and a half times of the total infections um, and what do you say to the businesses out there that are already on a limb? They're going to see more of their livelihood shut down, especially like in South Dundas, where you have like fewer than five cases total. And those restaurants have to go back to just takeout or delivery. Like that so seems very a, unfair. I understand. I understand, but we're getting this. It's going to be, it'd be very difficult for us to uh, do that um, in certain parts and not in other parts with all the back and forth that's going on. So uh, if we keep the restaurants open in one area, people are going to go there. We're seeing it already from Ottawa at this point. It, I hear you, Philip, and I'm trying to do my best to, and hope that we don't have to do it. I'll be honest with you. I'm, okay. I'm hoping that uh, we don't have to do it, but unfortunately, I, I don't see myself doing it and excluding certain areas. It's, it's, we're too close. And the, um, the, other case, the other question I have for you is the, uh, with the schools. Um, this, the page that has the listing of what schools are, are currently listed hasn't, it only has one listed. The province has several listed that are one or two. So is there a reason why that's not necessarily up to date? We're, we're not, we're, we're only listing outbreaks. Okay. And, and the government is supposed to be listing the schools. And okay. at this point we have a 12 schools. So we our, our obligation is the outbreaks and we have one outbreak and that's the only one. We haven't okay. had a new one. They should be, the government's website should be up to date. Yeah. Okay. No, I, was, I wasn't sure if you were listing on them both of those or not. No, so. no, we're not because we don't want to be, it, one, it's, 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 it's just easier because they get the okay. reports. Just why, why, why repeat it twice? Okay, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question, Dr. Paul, comes from James Morgan, The Review. Please go ahead. Sure. Uh, my question uh, this afternoon is, um, does the health unit do any sort of monitoring of uh, retirement homes in communities that are near facilities where there are already outbreaks? Yes, we do. We have a constant uh, retirement home and a long-term care list that we always uh, update and always uh, look at their status in terms of their ability to, uh, what their staffing ability is, what they are. And now we're, and now we're gonna start doing daily reports again, which is what we did in March. And we're going to do the same for long-term care facilities and retirement homes as well, ensuring, and then we color code them to see if there are any uh, outstanding issues that need to be addressed proactively. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Moving to the phone lines. Do those joining by phone have questions? Ceux qui se joignent par téléphone ont-ils des questions? Yes, uh, Stéphane Bourgeois from Le Régional Hawkesbury. I heard today that uh, you spoke about uh, shorting staff at the uh, Prescott Russell residence. It came to my attention that uh, some workers that are in quarantine, uh, are supposed to be in quarantine, went to work uh, Friday or, or this weekend. Uh, is, is it um, the source of, of the case being uh, uh, moving up or? No, we, we, uh, at this point, we don't have any indication. We, we know that um, those individuals cannot go to work and I, I don't have any report of that as well, myself. 
we do know that some have resolved. I think I read before that some have resolved. I'm not sure if any, uh, it's possible that um, uh, some, uh, some staff uh, were actually resolved as well. So maybe they had been resolved and 10 days later, because don't forget this, uh, there was a uh, respiratory outbreak before we declared a, a COVID outbreak. So it could have been that they had finished their 10 day period. But otherwise, if they're, um, it would be very unlikely, and I haven't heard about anybody going in during their quarantine period to work. Okay, uh, as those those staff members that are in quarantine or that uh, had been in quarantine, uh, would would they been to they they be tested again tomorrow? We've tested. Uh, we have tested. Uh, depends on the situation. We, we've we've retested everybody. So. Everybody's being retested, but it depends on on what at what time and when they were in contact. So I don't have all the details now. Okay, and you mentioned that if we wanted the up, update on the school situation, we would go to Ontario.ca. Is there Ontario.ca? There is a uh, Ontario.ca. If you go to Ontario.ca/slash/coronavirus, uh, yes. um, there is on that page. It it gives you uh, school school information. Just click it and goes to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions by phone? D'autres questions par téléphone? Hi, I, I'm not sure if uh, I, I, I'm on my phone, but I'm, I'm going through Zoom. Um, uh, I'm just curious, um, outside of the outbreaks at, I'm, I'm reaching out from CBC Ottawa, um, outside of the outbreaks at long-term care homes, I'm curious if there's an understanding of where the majority of cases are coming from, uh, where that transmission is happening, uh, if there's age groups attached to that, uh, kind of any information around that. We, we, we're we looking at that right now. We're, we're suspecting one of them to be community acquired, brought into the, into the community from uh, a cluster of cases uh, that we've had, uh, but others we have not pinpointed yet. We're, we're, we're desperately trying to find out where they are, but for the most of them, we don't. Uh, it, and, and the two of them, as you know, were surprises to us because they were completely asymptomatic in terms of COVID, had other issues, and they tested positive asymptomatically. So again, th th that's a puzzle to us as well. Thank you, Dr. Paul. D'autres questions par téléphone? Other questions by phone? Uh, maybe I'll ask a follow-up, sorry. Uh, but uh, I'm just curious, uh, so you have to have further discussions, uh, I believe you said with the federal government. Um, so what, what needs, to, you know, and, and, and as you pointed out, the numbers are there, uh, although it's kind of teetering on the edge. I'm just curious, what, what else needs to be addressed with the uh, federal government uh, and why is, uh, why are the numbers today not enough to, you know, trigger stage two or modify uh, well, stage Well, first of all, two? just to clarify, it's the provincial government that we're dealing with. Provincial it's government, the, okay, thank you. It's yeah. the provincial government. It's, it, it's just that um, we, I spoke to them on Friday and we had agreed to see, because you know, it's not a light decision as, as you hear, there's a lot of you know, there's people's livelihoods on the line here. Um, and the numbers do dictate it at this point. Um, and we had agreed that we would review it over the weekend and uh, discuss it either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. And the reason I say tomorrow morning is because we usually get the provincial numbers. We got a provincial dashboard late on Monday. So that's why. But tomorrow we will be discussing it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions by phone? D'autres questions par téléphone? Seems as though those are all the questions for today, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much. So we'll see you everybody on Wednesday. Merci. Uh,